morning. I hope you could hear the end of. Um, well, maybe I'll just do it again. I was doing some furniture rearranging this weekend, and this bowl had been sitting near my fireplace for a very long time. It's something that I got during the early days of A Course of Love, when we still had the coffee shop, and we sold things like this. And I got it from a person I thought was a true crafts person. But I came after a while to think that I didn't need it. And I was thinking today that there are some ways that I've been a little arrogant about this kind of thing. That because I had the direct communication, I didn't need the symbols. I didn't need, I don't know. I don't know exactly what else I can think of at the moment. <clears throat> the studying for sure. You know, we're called not to be doing the studying and learning anymore. And that's actually something that I want to share with you today uh, from the Way of Mary. There's this nice little section where she talks about um, kind of the start of our journey and where it's heading. And I thought it might be important to share because we can all be that way where we get this little bit of arrogance that says, I don't need that anymore. But it's not arrogance, maybe, at that time. There's a time when you have to realize, I don't need that anymore. And we can think it's an arrogance to say that about learning. Oh, I don't need to learn anymore. And then you go, kind of step aside from yourself and think, well, that's kind of arrogant. So it just seemed like a good way when I had just rediscovered my singing bowl to enter this topic for today. And I will read to you from Way of Mary. To change one's idea of what's been learned is likened to a death. Few can face death to find new life. Many feeling a hint of change, a hint at all they don't know, all they knew incorrectly, even the partiality of their truth, run in the opposite direction or fight to retain their hold on truth. No one wants to know that all they've worked for is as dust to gold. Few want to be still and know themselves. Fear gets in the way. And so it is that one can literally accept the idea that they have left ego behind and that they have left fear behind, even for a brief time. So when this happens, when Jesus takes us, I'm departing from way of Mary, <laughs> um, but when Jesus takes us in the beginning, beginning of a course of love, away from ego and away from fear. This provides an opening. And Mary is saying that even if this happens for a really brief time, then we can begin to let that which is true and that does not constitute the false rise up in us. Truth can replace the sense of fullness that felt like life, you know, like you were just stuffed full with this learning and it felt like being really alive and make open space available and desirable as the sign of living. We can begin to live, to be newly and truly alive. For many, the transition will start with a moment of true living and its realization. Then she can look and see that even when she believed herself to be an ego, and even when he lived in fear, they had true and beautiful moments 
to bring to life. It is with this realization that they begin to change their lifelong view of themselves. They cease to judge themselves for what they did not know and emptied of false knowing begin their quest for true knowing. And this is where we pick them up together. And part of our aim is to keep our fellows from filling with the knowledge of to which they are accustomed, because this will merely occupy them again. In this way, we begin to see what we are speaking of, the vastness, the spaciousness of that which is beyond learning. You can fill with spaciousness, as odd as it sounds. You can, in spaciousness, be the door opening before us. And she's saying us there because this is an opening both in the realms we have separated into divine and human. Uh, it's an opening to them becoming one. And that's the exciting change that's going on, is the change of no more division, even between the realms. This is what's coming into being because of all that we are experiencing newly due to this work and perhaps many others and perhaps to many things that may have felt to me recently more like a tool, like the singing bowl. Like, oh, I don't need that anymore. But they can be true and real. And while I'm sorry for any seeming arrogance I might have ever conveyed about anything like that, I also want to convey to you that it's okay to stop and say, I don't need that anymore and go on to what fills you. Leave some things behind so that space opens up to fill you with new life. Thanks for being with me.